talk to me. Then I think. Yay! Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, this is a live show. Today is Monday, and on today's show, everybody, I will be restoring a silver spoon. So uh, I'll be showing how to restore and polish this family heirloom and any other heirlooms that you guys might have that you want to keep and restore and use and enjoy. I'll be showing you guys how to do it on today's show. So that's what today's show is about. So I already see so many people joining in. Yay. So if you don't, if you've stumbled upon this show, know that this is a live show being filmed in sunny Los Angeles, California. I'm Ani and I created the polishing machine called the Jewel Tool that we are going to be using on today's show. So you guys, I just want to take a moment to say hello to everybody and I hope everyone had a beautiful weekend. I hope you took the weekend to relax, recharge, do what you wanted to do. Because that's what I did, kind of. <laughs> so um, I just I hope everyone had a fabulous weekend. Um, let's see who is here today. Who's here today, Yaro? And I just want to say, you guys, how much I value you guys. I really do. You guys are like my partners in crime, <laughs> my partners, my friends. Um, and I just want to take this moment to just say how much I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. So something from my heart on a Monday, on a Monday. Come on, girls, we can do this on a Monday. Kristen, I need air conditioning. One more. It's awfully hot under here. So hello, everybody. We've got Linda. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Monday today. Hi, Linda. Deborah. Hi, Deborah. And we've got Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Carol Barnett. How are you doing? Hi, Jan. I saw Jan's name pop up earlier. Hello, Heidi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Karen Miller Anderson. Hi, Cindy Lee. You, know, you have to say it so loud. I can hear. Hi, Nancy Robertson. Hi, Carrie. Oh, Steve. Hi, Steve Sharp. Welcome, welcome. Maybe you have some old silverware hanging around, some of your wife's silverware. You can polish this on the jewel tool. Oh, Deanna Schnitzka, hello. But she says they're drying out from nine inches of rain. Oh my God, it must have been pouring like all weekend long. That's a, that's, that's, that's a lot of rain. Wow. Hi, Kat. How are you? Hi, Joe Tubb. And we have some more. Who have we got? Oh, I see him. Hi, Judy Crack. I saw her. Oh, I see. Hi, Joe. Hi. I love it. So did the wave. Oh, shoot. I kind of got away. I know, Bea, a Viv wife. <laughs> Oh, hello, gorgeous. I love anyone who calls me gorgeous. I, I, oh, there am I. So, you guys, hi, hello, hello, hello. Okay, so you guys, so today, so I posted, I posted something on the weekend that our lovely partner, Blanche Nake, did. So, she restored her father's old pepper mill, pepper grinder, whatever you want to call it. And she was going through her mom and dad's old stuff, and she ran across it. And she didn't even think, she thought it was maybe silver plated. And so the second she touched it, she saw, oh my God, it was so polished. She said, wait, I got to take a before picture. So I reposted it, and I can't tell you the amount of likes, the amount of um, questions that I had about this. So I, fo I thought it was fitting. I look for, I, my mom has a lot of silverware, so that's one. And so this is what it looks like here, you guys. This is the before and after. This is my Instagram, you guys. 
Oh, it's kind of glaring, Yara. Hold on, let me lower. Okay, tilt it down. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, there's the before and there's the after. In the before, let me zoom in real quick. Yara, I'm gonna stay in that one spot. If you guys look, it was so corroded. She said, "Do you guys see that? You can see all the pits and stuff." And then she took it to va va voomzi. Wait, where am I? Hold on one second. One day it'll happen. There you go. I got to But see how beautifully polished she did it from the top to bottom. So you guys, so you can tell she says, if you look, because if you swipe to the right, she says, I've been cleaning out a junk room. And so she said, this was my father's pepper grinder. And then she said, decided to take it to the jewel tool. See, was under there. The first photo she, had, the first photo she had already started at the top part. So she rushed back to take the before photo. I'm over the moon. We can now probably use this treasured family heirloom. And so basically that's, so you can tell right here in this picture, she did put a, pol the uh, top was polished. So she quickly went and took the before picture. So that's that. So this post inspired me to show you guys how to restore anything that's you know, vintage. You know, something that you have and you've been scared to do. I'll show you all my tips and tricks to see. Yes. So, yes. So, Cindy Lee says she makes spoon rings and it's excellent to file and polish. So, I have a lot of partners that use the jewel tool to make that, like, they cut this off and then they'll flip it around. They'll, like, put it in, like, they'll bend it and they'll make a ring out of it. So, a lot, like, Almost everyone that makes silverware jewelry uses a jewel tool because they say they can't live without it while making it. Ah, well, happy birthday, Joe, and congratulations and welcome, welcome to the jewel tool fam. So, well, here today, well, we, I'm so glad you're uh, joining us on the live show. Oh, Kat, I love hearing that. Kat said she was able to spend hours on the jewel tool yesterday, just the therapy she needed. Isn't that something, you guys? Like, going on the jewel tool is not work. It, like, takes you into a wonderful, relaxing zone of tranquility and leave me alone kind of attitude. Let me just enjoy the process. There's just something about it. Um, when I'm at a trade show, and let's say the trade show isn't that busy with a lot of traffic, I'll actually, instead of just sitting and doing nothing, I'll polish and do something on the jewel tool because it, it makes me happy. So sometimes people are like, oh, you don't have to do that. I'm like, no problem. I like to do that. I'm very happy to do that. So I get it, Kat. I get it. Those who have a jewel tool understand why there's a hashtag called I love my jewel tool. So, <laughs> hi Irene on YouTube. Yes. So uh, Irene asked. She has some scratches on her sunglasses, and asked if I can show how to remove the scratches off your sunglasses. I can remove the scratches. Um, one show in SEMA. Oh my God, it was like one man told another man that this lady can polish the scratches off of their glasses. And that's all I was doing. It's very easy, Irene. The only thing you have to worry about is if the glasses have a coating. If the glasses have a coating, you're gonna, ha you're gonna remove the coating to get to the scratches. That's the only downfall. But if it doesn't have a coating, oh, it's so easy. Like I even have before and after pictures I can even show you. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up just real quick. A, polar, but a polarized means that there's a layer. Those are polarized. Kristen's like, I already have a candidate right here. Yeah, I know. I've dropped mine too. Hold on. Glasses. Let's see if I could find them. Hi, Helen Wagner. Hi, Bonnie Mahaffey. Hi, uh, Kathy Cook. 
Hi, Darlene Gibson. I think I have. Oh, I'm so excited. So, Darlene Gibson said that her moonstone uh, uh, arrived today, and she said it's beautiful. I'm so excited for you. Oh, speaking of the stones, um, I will be going shopping tomorrow. So excited. So, everyone who put their requests in or you know, they're not obligated to buy anything, but whoever requested certain stones or who missed out on the stones that I showed last Thursday, I will be shopping again tomorrow and they put certain stones aside for me because they're like, Ani, it'll be gone by the time you get here. So thank you so much for posting what uh, Kristen put the post out on the Jewel Tool community and asked everybody, what would you like Ani to bring in? And so some people said more of the brown sapphire. Some people said more of the emerald. Some more people this, that, whatever. So whatever it is, Kristen, print that list out. Literally, I have the list printed out. And so I am going there tomorrow. So tomorrow's live will be from the vault. And there's even more good stuff coming your way, you guys. I'm so excited. That place is, un uh, that place is unending. So I've taken notes of everything you guys want and what you guys want to see. So I'll be picking them up and some more stuff that catch my eye, speak to me, you know, all that stuff, you guys, and just a lot of other things. So tomorrow I'll be looking for, so if there is something that you guys want me to look for or missed out on something, just let me know. But I'm this time I'm going to get a little bit more of the most popular ones um, because s some were sad that, by the time they checked out, their cart was empty. Every, other people nabbed it. So when, that, when you're sad, I'm sad. Mm. So I'm going to make sure I have enough of the brown sapphires, <laughs> the pink opals, the carnelian, uh, whatever else you guys put on that list. I'm going to make sure I have enough of so that. So a lot of the things that they have are cut stones. They do have some rough stones. So I'm going to go through their piles tomorrow. It just takes a lot. You guys don't understand. This place is never ending. It's just stones after stones after stones. So there'll be some new things that I'll pick up. So le let's see. And I contacted you guys. Contacted someone for y'all on Friday. And the response I got was, Ani, oh my God. And I said, so this is one of the top, top rough stone dealers out there. They're not found on Facebook or anything. They sell to huge quantities, to huge companies, some huge companies that if I say the name, you'll know like this. But I know, I know that person personally. And I said, you know, a lot of my customers want some rough, and they said, no problem, Ani. So I will be receiving a list of what they have in stock this week, and I will let you know what that is. I know already that there is a lot of pink quartz, turquoise, um, Mexican purple opal, purple opal that that's pretty cool and mexican caramel swirl remember that in the conversation so stay tuned you guys i got your back i got the goods i got the good sources you know none of these weird places that you're you know leery about buying from no i got legit sources that people like high caliber people buy from so i yeah, so you guys, I got you covered on all levels. I know Bonnie, I know Bonnie, I swear when I said that, when I contacted them, I'm like, Bonnie is going to love this. And you know, whatever the savings, I will pass along the savings to you. You know, some people who know me, they were like, oh my God, these stones are beautiful, Annie, you're selling. And then they're like, why are you selling them so cheap? <laughs> and I'm like, this is, this is not my this is not my thing. What I'm doing is, you know, right now there's no shows going on. They just canceled my SEMA show. JCK is gone. 
You know, they just canceled JCK in uh, Miami. They just canceled JCK in Texas. And there, there's nowhere to buy stones. So I feel as though during this weird time, if I can help you guys in any way, I'm there for you. This is, this is me. If anyone knows me, knows that this is how I roll. This is Ani. You know, you might see an outside persona of who I am, but the real Ani is always there to help in any way I can. So, I get to go shopping tomorrow. Oh. So, you guys, that hi, Susan. Hi, Glenda. Oh, happy birthday to your daughter, Melissa Glenda. Happy birthday to her. Hi, Debbie Rogers. Hi, Debbie. Debbie, how cute. Okay, so, oh, I was going to look for that. Oh, God. I'll find it later, and I'll show you guys. I got too many, too many pictures. Oh, Michelle, Michelle Chapman bought the lapis, and she says, truly one of a kind. Listen, I promise one thing, that I will make sure that the stones you get are handpicked by me and are beautiful. I'm not going to put out anything I don't like myself. You might like it, you might not, but I just want you to know it's, up to my level of standards and my quality standards. So, yeah, so I actually put myself in your shoes. First of all, first uh, prerequisite, the stone needs to speak. So the stone has to contain good vibe energy. So end of story, if that, that's that. Then it has to be beautifully polished, beautifully cut. The color has to be top notch. You know, we want the best of the best, and I make sure, and it's a nice shape, you know, attractive, all of that good stuff, all of that comes into play when I pick out a stone. So, there. Okay, so, back to the spoon, El Spuno. So, this is a silver spoon. I was born with one in my mouth. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wasn't, I promise. <laughs> so, you guys, but, like I said, everyone kept asking me how to polish vintage silverware all of that all weekend long so i figured today let me show you and i'll show you how i use the different brushes and to test if it's uh silver plated or if it's real silver because that's the thing sometimes you get something and you're like yeah it's silver and then you go and polish it and you're like oh that was not silver <laughs> so i'll give you my tips and tricks right now so let's get started everybody and again all of you that joined in, I wish you had a beautiful weekend. Debbie Rogers said something cute. So let me, while I, while I hear that, let me put my fingertips on. Oh, Debbie, I got goosebumps. Ser seriously, thank you so much. What did she say? I don't even know. Debbie Rogers said something very kind about me. She said the most real and honest and lovable person she knows. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It doesn't fall upon deaf ears. It falls into my heart. So I cherish it. So thank you so much. I, 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 what you see is what you get. You might not like what you see. What can I do? It is the truth. You know, you guys have been seeing me do lives like almost every single day since this pandemic started back in March. And I, I am who I am. <laughs> A little crazy, but you know, we can get it done and get the job done. So thank you for that, Debbie. I love you. Let me go ahead and show you guys my spoon. So look, you guys. The, so the spoon is old and corroded. We, we, there's like oxidized. Well, yeah, it kind of gets a little gross. So like all of these things are what people always ask. How do you get into all the little nooks and crannies? We're going to clean up this inside right here. It's got the little dip in there. And then the back side, look at that. It's got such a beautiful detail here, huh? I can't get my eye off that. Oh, Myra's back. Oh, let's have a celebration. If I had a popper, Myra, if I had a popper, Myra, I'd go, yay, Myra's back. Congra I'm so happy to have you back, Myra. You did great by helping your family. So I'm so happy you're back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So uh, well, so this is how I kind of test 
um, if something's plated. I'll pick somewhere that's not so obvious, you guys, you know, but like just to see how it polishes with the felt wheel will tell me. Um, sometimes if it's silver plated, the peach, so this is the peach and this is the green. Sometimes the peach, using the peach might be a little deceptive um, because again, it's the peach color brush is only a six micron, um, but it has, it can, if you hold it there long enough, it can remove light plated silverware. So that's not a good test. So a good test is the f good old felt wheel. So you would just take a corner something that's not so obvious, put some compound on it. You guys see that? And just do like a little test in an area that might not be so obvious. So hold it there for a few seconds and look at it. Do you guys see how that's polished right there? Yeah, I was fixing my camera. So do you guys see that? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's a good zoom. So basically, if it was plated, sometimes here, sometimes if you polish it and you didn't see any kind of like copper color, it could be silver. Chances are it is silver <coughs> or it's a really thick, heavy plating. So just so you know, but I think this is silver. I'm hoping. <coughs> if not, we'll find out and we'll still polish it. But it's weird. Do you see how it's like yellow inside here? I don't know what that is. But for the most part, you guys, I'm going to do this. I mean, the real test is <coughs> taking it to the scratch eraser. <coughs> like that totally will tell you. Watch this. Look, hold on. So that polished spot, we hold it there for a while. Yeah, this is silver. You guys see how usually if it wasn't silver, it would start to, <coughs> you'll see a change in the metal, how there's a, like a layer and then you might see like a copper color coming through. So that's a little test. So let's keep going. Okay, so <coughs> um, my first order is going to be using the brushes to get into the nooks and crannies. Now, if this wasn't solid, if it wasn't silver and you just want to polish the plating, I would recommend just using the green brushes. This is your safest bet to polish silver plated um, uh, silverware. This is beautiful. This will not take the plating off. The one micron is your safest, safest bet. Do not be afraid. Use it. Okay. All right. Done. So, but since this is silver, we're going to actually take it to a, another step. So I'm going to test it out with the two inch six micron first. Okay. Cause it is a little heavily corroded. I don't think it's the job for the one micron. It's too fine. So let's just see what this does. I haven't tested it. So, so I'm just going to hold it here and just kind of see what happens. Change up the rub pattern and kind of see what it does into an area. So let's see what happens just with this alone. Kind of change the scratch. Oh, wow. Oh, hello. Hello. Why hello? Okay, so that's that's actually really nice to be honest with you. So I'm actually going to bring it down the speed. I'm going to turn the speed down a little because I want to try to get into these nooks and crannies as much as I can. Now, if I can't, remember I have two bystanders here that's standing by. I have the three quarter inch and I have the nine sixteenth if I wanted to use them. So these would be if I really needed to get into that small detailed area. Do you guys see that? So you have a little area to do that. So this is when these come into play. I mean, I wouldn't use this for the whole thing you wouldn't be left with a brush, to be honest with you. And then maybe the <coughs> three-quarter inch, this is the three-quarter inch, to get in there as well. Do you guys see that? See? So, but let's just slow it down because if you slow it down, the bristles become softer and a little bit more flexible. So let's see if that aids and helps me get into the nooks and crannies because I really don't want to use those little ones, but you never know if I need to. Oh, hey, that actually was really nice. Look, 
Hold on, let it focus. Yara will tell me. It's pretty good, you guys. It really is. It's cleaning that stuff up. Really nice. Hold on, I'm eating my mic. Again, if you really want to get into those nooks and crannies, you guys, just use the smaller, you know, brushes. Wow, look what it's doing to the center one right there. Look at that. From that to this. So we'll just keep going. So if you slow down the speed, hold it there for a little bit longer. Don't push. So what you want to do is you want to kind of wiggle those little bristles into all those little nooks and crannies. That's the objective, you guys, you know, is to kind of get them into the nooks and crannies right there. I mean, you can use the 400 grit, you guys, but I don't like the, the blue one. But this is going to, you know, take it to a more matter, like a, a, like a polished mat. And I don't want to go there. I don't think it's necessary. I think this will do just fine. I just hold it there just a little bit. Even slow it down just a little bit more. You guys see how softer the bristles get? And kind of get into the little nook and crannies. And there, I think we're good. You guys see that? Okay, so now let me crank it up and just keep going for the whole thing down here. Oh yeah. Let's just move it along, people. Zippity doo da. So the reason why I chose the two inch, you guys, is because look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at this. Super clean without changing any of the detail. Very nice. Very, very nice. I feel like there's like a little darkness up at the tip. But again, you can adjust whatever you need to do. Oh, that's actually really nice. So that's that. So now let me go to the ball here. So this is why I like the peach one. This is the peach color. You see that? And I'll get in there. Now we'll flip it in the back. Beautiful. Look at that. So now let's do this. So you guys see that? That's just gross. Okay. So from here, let's go ahead and just get it all cleaned up. It should do this really quick, you guys. Just to give you an idea of how quick you should start to see it. You guys see that? And then when you're, what you're doing is spending a little bit of time to get into more of the nooks and crannies. And so here too we'll continue. So again, just following back and forth, back and forth. Kind of wiggling it, changing the scratch pattern. And that's, so I call the peach one and the green one best friends because this peach will make this look perfect and that's what a real best friend does it makes their friend look perfect i gotta put the i didn't even put the vacuum on this whole time so there you guys see that pretty nice huh really nice so there and then i'll slow it down just one more time real quick slow that down get into all these little nooks and crannies too by the way i forgot about that area Aren't they lovely? They just get into everywhere you want them to get into. Oh, yeah. Here, let me, oh, wrong way. <laughs> Oops, wrong side. So there we go. So you guys see I just slowed the speed down, but I'm not pushing hard. You don't want to push hard because what you want to do is you want these little bristles. You want the little bristles to get in there and work. If you push, it looks like this. You guys see that? If you push, you don't do that. So you, if you just hold it there, it'll get in there. Do you guys see what I mean? But if you smash it, that's not helping your cause. Squishing does not polish better. It just means you're trying to destroy your bristle brush faster than necessary. Because they're, they're known to have extreme long life performance. In the, so this is pretty good. We're done. I'm actually overkilling it. Judy Craig is taking notes. I love you, Judy. You're adorable. So there. If there's anything else that you see, there we go. So there. Becky Gibson. Hi, Becky. Okay, so here we go. All right, I'm glad you guys are joining in. This is good stuff. So keep that going. Let me turn the speed up. Okay, so now, you guys, I'm going to get into this because it's a curve. Do you guys see that? It's like a loop, 
Okay, so let's. So this is how you would do. Yaro, can you show the sh the side view? Yeah. So I have it at full speed, you guys, right? So I'm holding it with my left hand, and I'm going to use my right index finger to press up against the brush without pressing hard. Support. So are you ready? So we're just going to hold it here and just kind of hold it in a spot, kind of wiggle it. Don't press. Pressing will not help. You guys see that? Okay, to do the top view. I won't get off of it so they can see what I'm doing. So you guys see that? So right there. So look at already. You guys see that polish inside? So this was before. This is before. I didn't do that. I left that there on purpose. And this is just the after really, really quick. Do you guys see that? And you want to get in there more? Watch this. Just go in here. Or you can actually, so because this has a weird lip, I'm going to actually go, stay on the top view. Ready? I'm actually going to go this way because the brushes are flowing in this direction like a broom. So now I want them to flow up into the spoon area. Do you guys see that? So look. So do you guys see how much more polished that spoon area is? So then we'll go, we'll continue. Yes. Oh, it's an emotional. Oh, so here, listen. So no, I know what Debbie's saying. Debbie, I hear you. If you use your dad's old spoons, sometimes the tips get caught in the garbage disposal and get destroyed. Just so you know, like this one is a little bit rough on the edges. I don't know if you guys can tell. Yeah, that's fine. What was so if if by chance you get something caught in the garbage disposal, all you can do, you guys, is you just take the fine. Okay, and you can just go like this and just smooth that rough area. Look at this. Talk about restoration. Do you guys see how smooth and fluid it is now? But you can repair a tip. Just so you know, here, let's even do this side. There we go. Oh, yes. Look at that. So, yeah. So, I understand, Debbie. I don't blame you. You don't want to use your dad's spoons. Yeah, don't restore them because you, they'll end up getting chewed up in the garbage disposal. Or you want to just keep them. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to keep the true marks because your dad was dropping them in the garbage disposal. <gasps> I don't blame you, Debbie. I would keep them as is, to, as a remembrance to your daddy. So, yeah. So, but that led me to think if you did have a garbage disposal issue on your regular uh, stainless steel uh, spoons, because it happens a lot. I have plenty, and I fix them all in the jewel tool. Just take your scratch eraser like you saw and then take it to a felt polish if you want to polish. If not, leave it with the scotch bite and I'll have a little matte look. Some of my stainless steel are all matte. So now let's get, oh shoot, I didn't do this area. I'll do it later. So from this, you guys, I'm, oh, since I have the felt, I'll leave it on. So you guys, you guys see first, look at the inside we did. Super pretty and super smooth. We'll get that to a higher polish with the green. But other than that, that looks beautiful. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's so you guys, wait, hold on. Let me just ask. So you guys, are you guys clear on how to fix the stainless steel spoon that got caught in the garbage disposal? So just like you saw me do, I clean the edge, whatever. Use your scratch eraser to smooth. And then if it's a matte piece of silverware, leave it. If, or put it, you know, hit it with a 220 grit brush finish to restore, you know, match the finish. Or if it's polished, of course, take it to the felt and polish it. Uh, my compound will polish stainless steel. Um, but yeah, that's all you really need to do. And here's a little technique too. This one's a little flat. I have another spoon. Hold on, let me show you real quick. It's actually right here. This is a crappy one. So like, let's say, I know I'm going off, but real quick, you guys, while I'm on the subject. So like, let's say that this area had the nicks. You guys see that? Okay. 
and you know it was all poo pooed out here too so you would take your scratch eraser okay this is just the fine um, and hold it like so so first of all you would clean of course all that nastiness you know hold it there a few a few rotations okay get that nice fluid finish look how that even is look how even beautiful okay so now to do that inside because it's mucked up so try to get in there like this do you guys see that and get in there as much as possible and if you can't get in there too like as good as you wanted to have no fear the mini scratch erasers are here so then you can just totally go in there and just sippity doo da real quick there but for the most part it's usually at that very tip you guys so there so there that's that and then again back here you guys see kind of take this is a little pitted so let me clean up some of the pit you see that so now it's two ways if it's polished if it's polished you guys you polish it if it's matte take like the uh, what's it called what do you call it like a 220 grit or whatever you have to match and just go like this and just put that that satin finish back on you guys see that hold on there you see the satin finish same with this one back there and it puts that satin finish back on beautifully and if it's polished you guys take the felt and polish it so you have two ways to do it so you just go like this oh hold on I forgot I had compound on it earlier because we were going to work on that ring. I mean that other spoon. So there we go. Just real quick to show you the polish you can get. You see that? And then again, just hit it on the edges. La 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 la. Beautiful. Right there. Beautiful polish. And then you can get inside there as much as possible. And whatever you can't, you guys. Just to smooth that over, you can get that polish. Whatever you can't get in there, you can either use your brush or you can use the mini felt wheels to polish inside there or even your inside ring mandrel to get inside there. Whichever one you want. Anything that has a felt. You know, but for the most part, that's repairing one that got caught in the garbage disposal. So let's go back to this bad boy, okay, and fix this one up. So I'm going to go ahead, put some compound, okay, and we start off like this. So watch this, you guys. Look at that already. And then we'll keep going, guys. And if there's any scuff marks, you guys, I'll, I'll use the, the scratch eraser, but I don't see, I don't foresee any, but I could be wrong. But for the most part, let's keep it going. Look at that. You see that? Pretty, huh? Actually, zoom out just a little bit. You can see that it's a spoon. There you go. So there. So do you guys see there's no pits? It's nice and polished. So anything that you see reflecting from my lights is just the rub marks from the felt. Right, Yarrow? So here, if you really wanted to get rid of those felt, ma those felt marks real quick, just use your magic buff or your, where, I don't even know if I have the other buff. I always give options. It's missing my other buff. How do things go missing here? I swear, you guys. Okay, never mind. I'll use the magic buff. Magic buff it is. I just didn't want compound on it. So there, just real quick, just to show you the difference. I'll do the tip. You guys see the shine that you get? I just did the tip. 
So there. So that's that. Just, But I'm going to continue. For all of those who can't watch today's episode, I just want to show you some quick little tips. But it should be really quick, you guys. So look, let's keep going. So... <coughs> No way, Heidi. Heidi says she fixed a stainless steel spoon this weekend. So we're going to continue. So this is the before and that's the after. And this is how I did it. So you just hold it right here. Isn't that lovely being able to see what you're doing? Oh, my God. Into the very detail. I'm like, there we go. And if there's any pits or scratches, I just hold it there just a little longer, you know? You guys, but do you guys see how I'm doing it like section by section instead of just doing one huge pass? I wanna make sure if there's any kind of scratches, I got rid of all of them. You guys see that? So just keep moving, moving the compound out. So we already did that side. You guys see how pretty that is? And then we're gonna finish that side but so pretty, crazy, huh? I'm loving you, this l gorgeous little spoon. So let's keep going. So this spoon will now look shiny, shiny, shiny. Everyone always wants these, and I don't care. I've even sold jewel tools to people who don't make jewelry that they just want their silverware polished. I really ha sold it to someone who said she was going to polish all her silverware with it. And she did. I still talk to her till this day. She loves her jewel tool. So there, you guys see how I'm kind of pushing the compound? So if you guys have compound, learn to kind of wiggle it off of the spoon all the way to the very end. You guys see how there's no compound on my spoon? You guys see that? Hold on. Let me wipe. Any, no, I don't have to wipe anything. There's no compound. These are just rub marks that you see. You guys see that? Other than that, <coughs> this is this is the polished surface. The, 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 hey, hi, everybody. That is me. Hello. Hi. Hello. Let me fix my hair. Hold on. As Nicole Richie would say, let me fix my eyeliner or my lipstick. That is so cool, you guys. So there. Okay, so now I'm going to... Actually, I realize I never polish this with the brushes. Um, with the little... Where, where is that sucker? Already I've lost the brush. Dear Lord. Um, with this one. Okay, so right now I used the felt polishing wheel. This is the polishing wheel with the compound that you get is pretty much available in every kit now the new ver the, a new version of this looks like this just so you know and it already comes pre prepped for you by the way well i mean like the brand new one look at mine mine is like has seen a day or two you guys see but it's black but it's usually the white thick felt wheel is what i'm using with my compound so then so now I missed this, as you can see, you guys, I didn't polish that. I don't know where my brain was when we were working on this. I think I got too excited to polish this. <laughs> oh, I should have polished the edges. Oh, well, whatever. We'll go back and do that. No big deal. So there we go. So there, I'm almost done. Now, you guys, I'm actually showing you guys, like, to do it super professional to the point where if this is going to go back into, like, Christie's auction house... You know what I mean? You don't have to spend this much time of perfection, but you know me. You know me. I'm going to show you the best way to do it, like the 100% way. Now, you can then decide to take shortcuts and, you know, whatever your heart desires. That's good, actually. Good. So one thing I didn't do is I didn't polish the outside, which I should and I want to. So give me a second. Let me touch up the outside rim. So I'm going to polish the outer rim. And anything that is a little bit bumpy and lumpy, do you guys see that? I'm going to hold it there a little longer and smooth it. So you guys see that? Hold on, let me show you. So do you guys see how much smoother it is? There's no lumps and bumps. Just follow through all the whole thing. 
Beautiful. Do you see how the light just follows that? Woohoo, baby! And then clean up that flat spot. If this had a little design here. So I want to keep up that same little lip design. There we go. Do you guys see that? Hold on. Let me get rid of the compound. Do you guys see how I had like a little flat little lip design right there? So that's, it's kind of fun actually. It's like kind of keeping up with the old look of the piece. Yes, so Leslie, yes. So Leslie, I have your request for the stones. Kristen already printed those out. I said that earlier. Some people might have missed it. I'll announce. So, oh, she's going to post. Oh, oh, she just put it. Okay, beautiful. Well, you guys have until tomorrow morning to put your requests in. Oh, nice. She repaired it. Okay, so so I'm going to actually highlight this. If you guys look, there is some pitting going on. Do you guys see that? Right here and right here. I mean, it is shiny, but not shiny to Ani standards. You guys see that? So let's go ahead and take care of those. So what I'm going to do now is I want to highlight everything that should be polished. We're talking even to like this level even to the very edge. I told you, this will be ready for Christie's auction house. You guys see that? Ooh la la. So now, let me highlight all of this stuff too. Hold on. You guys see how I highlight all these little details right there? Hold on. Okay. Do that a little, and then let's do this little edge right there. Now, again, this is for, like, if you want to do it, like, legit pro. Or if you're making jewelry out of it. This will give you, like, this will look, like, ridiculously awesome. So now let's do that center. There we go. Oh, already you can see it so much more polished, huh? You guys can see that. Let me go ahead. So I'm going to add a little bit more compound to it. And so you guys will notice why I haven't used the green brush yet. So I haven't used the green brush just yet, you guys, because I wanted to still get into the, uh, uh, anything that I have, any compound that I have that is like inside crevices, you guys, this green brush of mine will take it all out and do the job for me. So let me just kind of get rid of some kind of compound. You guys can see it there. You guys see how much the level of the polish is so much more finer. Those little dots of, you know, of remnants are not there. We're going to do the back side too. Do you guys see? Hold on. So there, we'll do this side too. Compound. So again, and then I'll do the side to make sure it's like beautiful. This is going to look better than it was brand new. Let me tell you. They probably didn't even have this kind of technology back then to get everything so pristine. Do you guys see that? That's the level of polish I'm talking about. So they and that just took a second. So you just hold it right here and make sure that edge looks beautiful. And it's not going to change the design, you guys. This is a felt polishing wheel. It, I'm not using a heavy compound. I'm just using a high polishing compound, you guys. So it doesn't have like a heavy abrasive quality usually things that are heavy that are abrasive like compounds they usually don't leave a nice high polish behind it's like a matte polish because it has abrasive in it makes sense right so if i'm deliver if this is delivering this kind of a polish guys look at that hold on let me get that shine if it's delivering this kind of a high polish, um, yeah, it doesn't have much of abrasive quality. I'm trying to get that light to show. You see it? Woo! Right there. So pretty. Okay, so now, wait, am I doing, yeah. So now let me do the face of this. So there we go. So trying it to change it around in different areas, you see? Wheel's doing all the work. I'm just chilling and enjoying the process. And if there's a stubborn little 
spot, hold it there. It's nice, you have full control. You can show the side view, this is good. Yeah, do the side view. You guys see how I work? Yes, how I get into the nooks and crannies, how I follow that, yeah, how I do that. Mm -hmm. Look, feathering, you see that? There we go. Oh, this looks gorgeous. Wow. This looks just pristine. Let it focus, you I was saying. You guys see that? Beautiful. I haven't even touched it with the green brush or the buff. Look at that. And then, okay, so watch this too. I want to polish this. So you want to go like that and kind of wiggle it in. There's some kind of like nicks and stuff. Just hold it there a little longer and get rid of it. And then you'll see that polish just come through. Wow, it's like gleaming. My light can't even catch it, Yarrow. So we're going to do the same thing here. So don't forget, give yourself a little compound. And there you go. There's some nicks here, you guys. So whenever you have some little bumps and lumps, just hold it there just a little longer, and then it'll kind of work its way out. Do you guys see that? How it kind of took everything out. Wowza, gazowza. Wow, do you think I can get in here? Hold on. Oh, yes, I did. Let's just put some more compound to help me help my you guys see what I did right there I got in there I just want to do just a little bit more there we go look at that look at that polish you guys even no lumps no bumps no nothing honey nothing honey nothing honey and so there we go. We're done with that side. All right, beautiful. Okay, so I think we're done. I kind of want to highlight. Hold on. Let's put some compound because I don't have enough. So just want to highlight some of this stuff. Do you guys see how I can highlight just that little rim? Can you guys see that? You guys see how I hit, highlight just that little area right here all the way to that V? And then let me flip it around to do the same on the other side. Just kind of bring it up a little bit higher polish. Hi, Tom from Arizona. It's okay. Oh, I didn't realize. Look, there's like these faces. Did you guys see these little faces? I'm going to polish that little face. Okay, so now watch what I'm going to do, you guys. So now I am going to, I am going to just wipe as much. Com actually, look at it, you guys. There's hardly any compound. So you shouldn't have like a, a lot of compound. There should be, some compound will kind of rest inside the little nooks and crannies, but for the most part, wow! Myra says she just got a a butcher's knife. Okay. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to actually ask you, Myra, for a picture, and then I'll guide you in how to polish that really old butcher's knife. So, antique. So, look, you guys, I just want to show you guys where we're at right now and how I'm going to bring this all together. If not, it looks beautiful the way it is, but you guys, watch what I'm going to do. So, before, I don't know which one, before I do anything, I'm going to use my green brush, okay? So, the green brush is going to now high polish anything in the nooks and crannies you guys that we had worked with so you always want to go over like if you used the peach color we actually use the smaller one my goodness i use it and it like disappears like it goes into a hole even though i have my organizers well whatever it, whenever you use the peach color always use the green after like because look it just takes it to a whole other polished look you guys see that I just worked on it from here to there 
So, yeah, do you guys see how I get into how it brightened up even that area? So, you guys, here you go. Yeah, I'm telling you, I had a customer who bought it just to do, you see how I changed the pattern? So you guys want to change it right here. The brushes will get a little warm, you guys, I'm not going to lie. So if it is getting warm, it's nothing that you're doing, it's just regular friction. So be warned, because I know when you're polishing with this, it's not as warm. So you're like, hey, what happened here? So just so you know, there is a little slight change of temperature <laughs> with the uh, brushes. And that's okay. That's normal friction. So you're going to change up the little... And you can slow it down too if you wanted to get into more nooks and crannies. We could do that. You see that? Beautiful. Wow, that came out gorgeous. Look at that. That's like pristine, you guys. I don't know. Is that camera picking up on everything, Yaro? Like, it's just gorgeous. Sort of. And then this one, too. Okay, I'll show it to you guys in a second. Yaro's like, turn off the machine. Not yet, Yaro. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me just finish polishing, and then I'll show you the after. Let me do that little area by the little buttocks. I call it the little butt of the spoon. There we go. Get into all those nooks and crannies that any kind of compound would deposit. And look at that. Okay, so let me turn off the machine Yara wants me to. So you guys can see what I've accomplished just on the, just this little handle. So right here, you guys see that? You got that polished edge all the way Oops, shoot i'm gonna like drop it in here too now i just put all my fingerprints on it god bless yeah i was like uh-huh it's like a little mini mirror hi okay look watch right here mirror mirror on the wall who's the best polisher of them all <laughs> isn't that crazy it's like a little mirror you guys are you guys seeing right there hello hello Let's see this one. Hello. I put my fingerprints on it. So there you go. So there. Uh, do you get a higher polish, you guys, with the magic buff or the regular buff? But I'm just going to keep going real quick just to make sure I got everything. So do you guys see how the brushes are great for the nooks and crannies, but they're not the best on solid surfaces, you know? But we're going to polish in here right now. And there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Beautiful. That's the inside of the spoon. Isn't that beautiful? That's just crazy. So all I did is I hold it right here. Let's get in there right there. Okay, so there. Okay, I'll, I'll help you guide. I got. I do. I maybe one day I'll do the knives. You guys, hold on. So there. I'm gonna clean that up. Now this is what you get with the green brush. That's the polish. It's really pretty in person, but you definitely want to use a buff. So I am going to hopefully find my buff. Right, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the nicest person of them all <laughs> I don't know where my I don't know where my buff is oh just like a regular black buff you know I see that you guys and then I find it like right under my nose how many of you guys ever do that like I swear you're like it's gone it's gone forever I'll never find it and it was right there all along literally under your darn nose you found it we cleaned up here. That's the problem. This is what happens when I clean. Is it in my drawer, maybe? 
You know what? If all else fails, I'll just take another buff and I'll make it into my buff. How about that? Okay? We'll use the one that says use with compounds. Okay? And I'll use that. Or just give me another buff. Here. Go. Just get me a buff, you guys. Off of the table. Yarrow? Oh, okay. Here. We have one. This is says compound. I don't know what this is. I have no idea, you guys. But watch how I restore and put a uh, buff back together again. So this is a brand new buff. Here, here's another demonstration of what you should do when you get a new buff. Take it like this. Oh, shoot, I stopped. You see, when you push too hard, the jewel tool has a safety on-off mechanism. You see, when I push too hard, it thought that maybe hair, on, uh, clothing, or something got caught. So if this happens, turn it off and turn it back on. You don't want to trigger that too much. So look. So let's go ahead and clean that up. Okay, there we go. Side view, side view here. Just a quick little, and I and if it's filled with compound and you want to just clean it up, that's a good little way to clean. Meanwhile, I'm going to give myself a good amount because it's brand new, and there we go. So now, the spoon's reflection, I love it. So there we go. Oh my God, look. So I have to show you guys this without these lights. This light is weird, Yarl. You guys see how a, a clean buff is always so nice. Isn't that lovely? You guys see this? Hi, Marge. Hi. Hello. Hi, Marge. Welcome to the show. Welcome. You guys see that? Oh, that's just, just delicious. Look at that. Okay. So we'll continue. So you just want to lightly touch. Don't be pushing. The buff will want to take it home with it. So, again, put a little of the compound. Thank you very much. Oh, see, now we got black on it. That means things are happening. So give yourself a good little polish on the side. Now, you can use the magic buff, too, you guys. I used it earlier, and it was fine. So you guys could definitely can use the magic buff. Works lovely. If you don't want compound into areas, it's a wonderful... Yes, Walter. If you have an initial here, you can remove it. The way I would remove, the, if there was an initial here, Walter asked if there was an initial there, how would you remove it? I would remove it, Walter, with the scratch erasers. And the fine would be uh, just uh, perfect. Or if it's a really tight spot, I would recommend using the scratch eraser in the, the mini. This way you can get into more detail if it's like in a really hard to reach spot. But, and then once that's done, once you do this, this is great because it'll remove it and kind of blend the metal. So you won't have like a pit, like a dip where you removed it. And then you can use the, just the felt polishing wheel to polish it back up again. Or if you have to do the smaller one, use the smaller one and maybe just touch it up with this to bring evenness to it and there you go well that was a good question and there you go you guys see how I'm not pushing into the the buff you don't ever want to push into a buff because we're not using this buff you guys to remove any kind of scratches what we want this buff to do is exactly what it's doing just give us a high luster like do you know what I mean Oh, that's all I'm asking for this buff. So you just glide over it gently. Don't pushy pushy. Don't push. You know, if you push, the uh, buff will push back. And he's not very nice. Just a light little thing. Just a glide, glide, glide like a little over. And that's all we need to get that beautiful polish. Do you guys see this? There we go. And you can try to get in here a little with the, with the buff. I'll try that, you guys. I don't know how much I'm going to be accomplished, but I know that this buff will be great. This little one would be even perfect. Look at that. Oh, my God. I didn't think of that. Hold on. Let me try that real quick. Let's try this bad boy. Remember, this is my, this is the precision little buffs that I have. Let's put some compound on you and see what you do. Maybe, should I fluff you a little? I don't remember what I used you for last, but we'll just give you a little fluff. Sure. Okay, there. So I'm just going to use this just gently, you guys. You don't want to push. 
Remember, this is just to bring a high polish even more. No pushy pushy. The buff will definitely push you back. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Zawa. Gawaza. Wowza. Do you see this? Wow. However, there is some compound which I don't like only because I think I use this on weird stuff. We were cleaning up all sorts of weird stuff. So hold on. Let me clean it one more time. Why? Okay, hold on. I'm not going to focus just yet. Let me clean up some of the compound. Give myself a little bit more just for a good measure. And now I'm going to hold it a little bit better. And now allow it to vibrate. There we go. Without pushing. There we go. You guys see? A Joel Toe Shine. Thank you, Glenda. There you go. That This way you don't see the reflection of the lights. Money. Tom said money. Money. Money, 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 money. Money. There you go. Um, who wants some chocolate pudding? Pretty, huh? Came out good. Now, let me just take my fingerprints off. That's the problem, guys. If anything, my fingers, which I keep saying that I want to clean up these suckers because they're heavily, coro uh, heavily loaded with some kind of compound. But I'm going to take them off nicely because they're leaving a little residue of compound behind. And I don't want that. So I'll hold it nicely with something clean. There we go. Oh my god, there's like a little spot of where I was pinching it. Stop. Okay, there we go. So this is that spoon that we worked on. Hi. Wow, you guys. This really does belong now in Christie's auction house. This used to be Ani's spoon. No I'm kidding. <laughs> Yaro. Isn't this beautiful, you guys? I think this spoon. So restoring a vintage spoon on the jewel tool. Ta da! So you guys see how beautiful it came out? And this was just your typical tarnished you know this has that nastiness that the silver you know silverware accumulates after years and years and just sitting there sometimes so this was extreme so you guys now know all the stages i took to get here um, basically it was three steps i even showed in between how to repair the tip of the spoon if it got caught in the garbage disposal It tastes even better now. If I could, <laughs> so you guys, you guys like this? It came out pretty, huh? See, just a little extra fine tuning. But again, so I used the buff. You guys, I used just the cotton buff. But if you wanted to use, like, let's say the magic buff, you could have. Really, honest to God, just a li quick little view of Yara how the magic buff would work. I just want you guys to know it's just as good. So just a quick little touch of the magic buff and you would have that beautiful shine. Do you guys see that? So the magic buff would definitely, let me get my fingerprints off, hold on. Will definitely clean up or give you that high luster like the, the felt, like the buff did, the cotton buff did. Because at this stage, all we were using the buff. When I say buff, you guys, I mean this buff or this buff it also comes in three inch okay the buff so the buffs are not designed to be your sanders no we are just putting a fine compound on it to give us that luster and to remove any kind of rub marks from the felt wheel or the brushes you know what i mean because the brushes will leave microscopic kind of fine little lines behind so the the job of this was done beautifully and then after this we just need a light little buff to bring a luster so that's why pushy pushy on these never result to anything good the jewel tool will think that it got something caught in it if you push so hard um, the piece 
sometimes will not be like they're not friendly you push too hard you can lose control over the piece just a light little touch like you saw me use is all you need if i can emphasize anything you guys don't push on your buffs you guys are delicate people out there don't need to be pushy pushy on the buffs so any other questions you guys i'm gonna go eat something with this now This looks so good. Like, so honest to God. Like, look, hold on. You guys can see the reflection of all our cameras. It's so pretty. Honest to God, when I was looking at this earlier, I was like, I don't know. I'm probably going to be left with some kind of pits or corrosion. You know, something left. Honest to God, I didn't expect it to look this good. You don't know what lies underneath. But just like... Blanche said when she did the pepper grinder where she just started doing the top and goes, oh my God, I was polishing so beautifully. She stopped and took a before picture. Y sometimes these pieces surprise you, so don't give up. If you have a nasty one, let the jewel tool take care of it and you'll be surprised at the beautiful results that you'll achieve. Oh, beautiful. So, okay, good. Okay, so Myra sent me a picture of her thousand year old meat cleaver <laughs> i don't know how long old it is i'm just joking relax i don't know and we're going to figure out how to restore it how to sharpen the edge without taking away that old world charm that some of these old pieces possess i'm all for when you restore something i kind of want that same wood restored like i hate when someone makes a new handle and i'm like why couldn't you just sand it and fill the you know, why couldn't you have done that? Why couldn't you kept the original? So I'm a fond, huge believer and supporter of keeping the integrity of something that was once old and just restoring it in its original state. That's what it is. I like to restore in its original state. I mean, obviously, if there's pieces missing, you got to fill those. But if you can salvage it, I feel like some people don't go to the extra mile and salvage it like i said they'll replace the handle and i'm like well i like the old handle even if it was a little you know crunchy and stuff you could have sanded and made it smooth put a layer of like lacquer on it do you know what i mean or the metal i kind of want to see some of that old world you know showing that it was old i don't want like it perfectly finished you know so i'm i'm a fond believer so i'll give you good tips myra to make sure we restore that meat cleaver and my son always is telling me to bring in some really old stuff to restore. So I'm going to be on the hunt. If anything's open or find something, like anything old out there, I don't know. Myra, maybe I'll make you send me that meat cleaver. Who knows? <laughs> I get desperate. So you guys, I'm headed tomorrow. For everyone that joined us later in the show, I announced earlier in the show that I will be making another trip another shopping trip to buy stones. So I, uh, Kristen has posted on the Jewel Tool community page um, requests of what's anything that you're looking for. If they have, I will seek and find and pick. That's what I'm there for. I already have, Kristen already printed the list of already what everyone um, said. Leslie Litt just said, was it Leslie or Cindy? Leslie. Leslie just commented that she just is going to be putting her requests in. So anyone, until tomorrow, you guys, you guys have your chance to put requests in. So to be a part of my shopping trip. And so tomorrow I will be filming a live show from the vault. I'm only staying in that vault. So I'm going to be picking up some of the large chunks of turquoise I've been asked for. Some more of the brown sapphire. Oh, my God. I even showed my mom that brown sapphire, and she's like, can you get me one? <laughs> I showed it to her on Saturday when they were over the house. My dad's like, that is some beautiful. And then the emeralds, oh, they just were like, the emeralds were just amazing. And the sapphire, my dad was just like, and the, corne the carnelian, my dad was like, you know, some of these stones, he, as jewelers, you didn't get to see. You know, jewelers know your basics basic stones you know ruby sapphire emerald garnet onyx lapis you know those kinds of stones and you know um 
tanzanite, um, all of those. So when I was showing my dad all the stones, he was like, wow, he's like, these are some beautiful stones. And I said, yeah, I'm going for it. going shopping on Tuesday some more. So stay tuned for tomorrow's show. It'll be on location. Um, and if you guys need anything, just comment and I'll pick it up. I'm going to pick up some stuff anyways um, because I had my eye on some things that I wanted, but time ran out last time. So I'm going to go early and they said they put some stuff aside for me because she said the emeralds that you wanted they sell out really fast so i told her to put those aside for me because i i want up here for me too <laughs> anyways so i hope you guys enjoyed today's show just to recap on what i used yaro's reading comments yaro is there any comments i should address any questions so let me just recap you guys are excited for tomorrow me too <laughs> okay Calm yourself, Ani. Calm yourself. Okay, I calm myself with my spoon. I swear, you guys, honest to God, I'm going to take this home and eat chocolate pudding with it. I'm a chocolate pudding lover. For anyone that cares to know, I love chocolate pudding. <laughs> and my husband, Yarrow, loves to make me a little bit plumper by bringing me chocolate pudding. So it's my little treat. At the end of the day, I just sit there and watch some TV and eat some chocolate pudding. So this is going to be my new favorite chocolate pudding spoon. Sing. So as a recap of everything that I used, you guys, if you're taking notes, um, I used the the 6 micron. Yara, where are you? Oh, oh, it's on. Okay. I used the 6 micron brush in the, in the uh, s 2 inch. And then I followed with the one micron brush. Actually, I realized that I didn't grab the two inch. I didn't grab the three inch. What I grabbed was, event at one point, it was the three inch, but my green brush has shrunk. Where's the sucker? So it's an in-betweener. <laughs> so this, I this brush, honest to God, has to be at least, I want to say, eight years old. Huh? You like it? Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Kristen likes my display. So this is an in-betweener. I could have used the two inch, which I probably would have used because this is larger. So it goes to show you how long these last. If you don't push hard, you guys, these will have a long life performance. And so and the overall uh, run, 3M's brushes that are a little on the pricey side turn out to be really inexpensive because after eight years, this baby is still giving me everything I want. So maybe it cost me cents at this point, <laughs> right, Yaro? And then I used the felt polishing wheel with my Jewel Tool compound. And you can use your four inch wheel for that. And then I used the regular buff with my compound to polish. But I also showed you by using the magic buff, you're gonna get that same finish because all you want is a high polish. And then if you were gonna repair, if you were gonna repair your um uh, like if the spoon got caught in the garbage disposer i used the scotch bright and the felt wheel and if the scratch eraser sorry the scratch eraser and the felt wheel and i suggested if you have a really hard to reach spot i recommended these two items it's our mini scratch eraser they come in a set of three and one comes already mounted with the mandrel same with the felt wheel it comes with as a set of three already mounted on the mandrel so there you go so i hope i i hope i explained everything because when you said you're taking notes i'm like <coughs> better make sure i'm thorough on this so myra says her favorite sterling spoon she eats ice cream with and she swears that the ice cream tastes better. Honest to God, doesn't it? I have my favorite spoons too. And I swear it just tastes so much better. So I keep eyeing this one and I'm like, hmm, I could see myself eating my chocolate pudding with the, with the spoon. It's Bye, you guys. Big hugs. I love you. So I will see you guys here. I will see you guys, not here, on location from the vault tomorrow. So I'm going to try to be on a little earlier. Um, what? So I won't. So, so you guys, I can't go on YouTube at the same time with Facebook when I'm on location. 
so I'll only be live on Facebook. So all you YouTubers out there, try to jump in the Jewel Tool Facebook to see uh, my live show on location tomorrow. So you guys, with that I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Ooh. Bye, you guys. I love you all. I do. Can't wait till you eat chocolate pudding. Can't wait. Bye, you guys. I'm going to take a picture with me eating chocolate pudding with this.